Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Hua Piao from uh, Temasek Polytechnic. So as uh, mentioned just now, today I'll share with uh, everybody here a collaborative project that uh, we have uh, conducted with uh, Dyslexia Association of Singapore. Uh, and it's a longitudinal project that we've done uh, over the past three years and uh, it's just recently concluded earlier this year. Okay, and before I even continue to start talking about the project, right, uh, I would just like to give my acknowledgement to um, the group of uh, uh, DAS uh, collaborators and also uh, collaborators from TP and also all my students from the different badges, right, that, uh, that uh, were involved in this uh, study. So, as you can see, it's quite a... Uh, intensive study, okay, with uh, a lot of uh, students involved in this. Okay, so, okay, so uh, again, I will not, uh, I think, uh, uh, Prof. Wong mentioned just now that we are, I think by now we are at that stage in the conference where I don't need to, like, you know, define what dyslexia is. So, yeah, it's a learning disorder that hinders uh, fluency word reading and uh, one of the main uh, leading explanations for dyslexia in the literature right, is, uh, is the phonological deficit hypothesis, where the argument is that uh, it's a lack of phonological awareness which results in the difficulty, difficulty in acquiring uh, letter knowledge and word recognition, which then results in a problem in spelling and reading. Okay, so that's, I, I guess, like the mainstream explanation. Um, Unfortunately, dyslexia is a lifelong condition that cannot be cured completely. However, there are, there are classroom-based interventions right, that equip individuals with appropriate coping strategies and skills. And uh, I think as everybody knows, okay, uh, at least everybody in this room knows, okay, the uh, DAS offers the uh, uh, MOE-aided DAS literacy program, or in short, MAP, okay, which is an intervention that is a language-based, cognitive, structured, sequential, cumulative, multi-sensory, uh, prescriptive, and emotionally sound. Okay, so uh, I think when we started this project, I think in 2015, it was still MAP. I think you mentioned just now that you know, it's now renamed as uh, MLP. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so this is, uh, this is uh, MAP. So it's an intervention program that's offered by DAS for students with dyslexia. Okay, uh, to kind of like, you know, uh, help them cope with some of the reading uh, or literacy difficulties in, uh, in their mainstream curriculum. And so far, it's provided intervention for more than 3,000 students. Our research question for this project is very simple. Okay, is it effective? Okay, does it help uh, improve the literacy skills of young children, right, from seven to nine years old? Okay, and for this, right, okay, we recruited 82 students, okay, age 7 to 9 years old, uh, and, and who, who are enrolled into the DAS MOE, uh, sorry, DAS MAP program, okay, and as you can see, this is the breakdown uh, of the, uh, breakdown of the age groups, you know, or the age range within, like, this, this 82 students, and, and I, I'm sure you will notice that, uh, and I'll, I'll just highlight the fact that, you know, if you take a look at this, right, most of the uh, students that we recruited are of a younger age range, between seven to eight years old, and the number of eight to nine years old students that we have, right, uh, that we've managed to recruit, right, is actually much lesser, and that may have some impact on some of the findings that I'm going to like, talk about later, okay, but I just highlight this fact here now, okay? Now, in most evaluation or uh, program evaluation studies, right, you typically have uh, control treatment study design. You know, you have a control group where you say, hey, for this control group, maybe we do nothing or we offer a placebo treatment. And then you have a treatment group. You say, hey, let's do this intervention. Uh, and we run this intervention from, uh, on you. Uh, therefore, it's called treatment group. And maybe after some time, six months, three months, nine months, one year, you compare the results of the two groups. And on, on some, uh, uh, in terms of like their, their, their abilities on, on, let's say in this case, uh, literacy skills, okay? And if let's say the treatment group shows improvement compared to the control group, you will say, hey, at least uh, I think there's some evidence to suggest that the intervention works, okay? Very, um, very uh, 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 standard uh, um, control treatment study design. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, right, we are not able to use this uh, 
for lack of a better word, textbook design. There are two main uh, issues. One is ethical issues. Because most uh, all of the students who are part of this study have you know, been diagnosed as uh, uh, individuals with dyslexia, or they have some speech uh, or language uh, uh, impairment problem. So it's really unethical to say, hey, yeah, I know you need uh, some sort of like treatment or intervention, but because you're in the control group, we're going to like you know hold your intervention for one year. So that's a very unethical thing to do. Of course, the other uh, the other um, um, uh, constraint that we have is mainly logistical constraint. So uh, the way the enrollment works, right, operationally, right, uh, it's not like one batch of students at the start of the year where I have like maybe 80 something students or 100 students and I can equally assign them to one of these two groups. Uh, apparently, okay, uh, the enrollment into the program is uh, throughout the year and students are just enrolled as and when they are diagnosed uh, as uh, dyslexic. So that presents a problem uh, to us uh, if that, that we cannot uh, use this kind of like uh, study design. Um, hence, ooh, sorry. Hence, okay, we got a bit creative and adopted this uh, age controlled study design, okay, where what we did right was, as I mentioned just now, right, we recruited participants from seven to nine years old, right, okay, and what we did was we split them into, two, into four age categories, 7 to 7.5, 7 7.5 to, 7 to 8, 8 to 8.5, and 8.5 to 9. Okay, and as they enter, uh, as they are enrolled into the program, okay, we start assessing them on uh, uh, three, uh, some linguistic ability skills. I'll get to that later. Okay, and every three months, okay, we will measure their performance, okay, in uh, these linguistic skills for the different age group. Um, of course, now, if you take a look at this, right, okay, although I don't have a proper control group here, okay, I can take, let's say for the age group, right, when they entered, uh, let's say for the group, when they in, entered the, and when they enrolled into the program, they were between age 7 to 7.5. So one year later, these, uh, these students, okay, will be between age 8 to 8.5, but having gone through uh, one year of intervention, correct? And then, okay, you have this other age group, okay, uh, age 8 to 8.5. So what I do is I take, when they enter the program, their first session, their first evaluation, so they are of the same age, controlled by age, okay, and, and but for this group, right, because when they enter the program, they are 8 to 8.5 years old. They have zero months of intervention at this point of time. So what I can do is to have, say, I have one group of, of uh, individuals, 8 to 8.5 years old, okay, but I have gone through 12 months of uh, intervention. I have another group, same age, 8 to 8.5 years old, uh, zero months intervention. Okay, and we compare the performance of uh, these two groups. And as you can see, okay, because there are four four groups, right, okay, you can easily compare uh, those, uh, the age group between 7.5 to 8 years old after one year of intervention or 12 months of intervention and 8.5 to uh, 9 years old uh, before any intervention, at zero months intervention, okay. And if you really think about it, right, okay, we can also compare like what's the, you know, between six months of intervention because we have four age groups here. Okay, for the purpose of this, uh, for the purpose of this uh, uh, presentation, right, because I only have 20 minutes, uh, uh, 10 more minutes, okay, good. Uh, so we will not go into, I will not talk about the six months comparison, I will only focus on the 12 months comparison, but, uh, in, and if you are interested to know the details, you can like, you know, come talk to me afterwards, but I can assure you that the six months intervention and the 12 months intervention, the pattern of result more or less like is consistent with one another, okay. Uh, so this is, so as I mentioned, okay, this is the overall study uh, procedure, okay, uh, students are enrolled into DAS, recruited into the study, okay, uh, depending on the age of enrollment, they are sorted in one of the four age groups, okay, uh, and then they are, uh, they are assessed, okay, on some linguistic abilities, uh, there are five sessions across one year, okay, at zero months, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. Okay, and within each session, right, okay, uh, you have three tasks, actually. You have a reading task, 
spelling tasks and the writing tasks, okay, in between the briefing and debriefing of the participant. Okay, for the reading task, right, uh, we measure reading fluency and accuracy. Uh, basically, it's a task of like 18, 18 words, okay, it's a list of 18 words, okay, and they're given three minutes to reach, read through the list of the 18 words, okay. And for the spelling task, okay, we have three types. Uh, so it's also a list of words, okay, but um, uh, students, right, okay, uh, as uh, participants, right, I, uh, are asked to spell the words in three different ways. First, they are asked to do some spelling. So, for example, cat, k e t, cat, okay. Uh, basically, the phoneme, phonemic, phonological decoding, okay. Um, the second spelling is letter spelling, cat, c a t, cat, okay. And the last uh, spelling is written spelling. They are asked to write down like cat, okay. Write, write down, and uh, so these are. Uh, these are some examples of the words that were used, okay? And for the writing task, right, um, we, hope we wanted to use the writing task to measure the writing ability by assessing, you know, their vocab, grammar, punctuation, handwriting, etc. Uh, so for the task, right, they are given uh, 10 seconds to look at a picture like this. Of course, they are across the different sessions, uh, we have different pictures. Uh, but so this is one of the pictures that's that's used, and they are given then five minutes right to mark to write anything they want uh, about this picture uh, as much as they want. Okay, so that's the that's the instruction. Uh, okay, so let's go to the results. Okay, um, maybe maybe just okay five more minutes, so I should not say. <laughs> okay, so for the reading task, right, we obtained two scores. The reading score. Okay, i.e. the number of words that's read correctly, and also the word reading time. Okay, in terms of like uh, number of words read correctly divided by like the total amount of time that's required to read the words. Okay, for the spelling task again, uh, it's scored on accuracy whether they they got uh, they spelled the words correctly in terms of the phonemic sound, in terms of the letter, and in terms of like writing it down. Okay, and for the uh, uh, writing task, right? We had a grading rubric that you have uh, two independent markers mark it, and then they they kind of like compare the scores. Uh, is 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 uh, marked on on is graded on uh, on three different components: content, which includes vocab and grammar, handwriting and spelling. Okay, so um, so some uh, this is some how we treated the some of the. Data. So missing data from particular sessions, right, are treated and, as missing and not included in the analysis. So for for evaluation, uh, logical in, uh, uh, ev evaluation study like this, right, there are some time where you no, know, just happens that for this particular participant they decide to drop out and then come back in or like you know, or there are some we have cases where participants in the middle of the task, right, say, uh, I don't want to do this anymore, not today. And we just had to like okay, let's let's stop the session for today. So there were some uh, sessions right with missing data or missing. Uh, so we just ignored ignored that lah. Okay, uh, but we still included the other sessions of participants with, uh, that that did not have missing data. Uh, outliers were removed. Okay, so uh, these are the analysis analysis that were conducted. Uh, uh, so in the series of graphs that I'm going to show you right, it's basically just independent t-test. Okay, uh, for the age control comparisons between uh, zero and twelve months intervention for each age group at each uh, for each type of this uh, literacy task. Okay, uh, okay. So for the reading task, okay, what you can see here, right, basically is that uh, for the younger age group, age eight to eight point five, right, there was an improvement. Okay. Uh, between the treatment, uh, between those who receive zero months of treatment and those who receive twelve months of treatment, uh, sorry, intervention. Um, unfortunately, for the eight point five to nine years old group, right, uh, the dif although the difference uh, is is trending in the correct direction, it's not significant. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, word reading time, okay, it's the same pattern of results. For the younger participants, you see a decrease in the amount of time right they take to read the words, 
and that's statistically significant. Uh, again, for the 8.5 to 9 years old, you see it trending in the correct direction. Okay, however, it's not statistically significant. Okay, uh, for the spelling task, okay, in, uh, for the sound spelling score, okay, for the sound spelling score, uh, you can see that for both the younger age group and the older age group, right, uh, in terms of the sound spelling, they improved, okay, over time between the zero, zero, zero months intervention and the 12 months intervention. Both are statistically significant. Okay, for the letter spelling score, Okay, uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, improvement. Okay, in fact, both are not statistically significant, and and you can see it doesn't doesn't seem to improve. Lah. Okay, so that's one. Uh, the same case for the written spelling score as well. Although you can see it's like the means are trending in the correct direction, but it's not statistically significant. Uh, for the writing task, right, uh, it's the same. It's the same thing, okay? You can see that the means are trending in the correct direction, but not statistically significant. And for the different components of the writing task, you, you, you tend to see uh, this pattern of results as well, okay? So, in conclusion, okay, so uh, we do see some improvement in the literacy task, okay? Uh, especially for reading the reading task, okay, reading fluency and, and, and accuracy, and also for the sound spelling, right, you see quite uh, obvious uh, improvements for those who underwent the MAP program, okay? And this is not surprising, okay, given that uh, if you know anything about the MAP program, right, uh, it actually focuses a lot on uh, phonemic awareness and letter sound knowledge that's effective in improving, uh, in improving phonological aspects of language, okay? So what is... Uh, more, what is uh, 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 um, uh, so uh, less, less, less uh, uh, helpful right, was that there's no significant improvement for the writing task. Okay, now there are several reasons why this may be the case. Okay, A, okay, because uh, because writing, I mean, one would say that maybe for writing would be a more a complex skill set, right, compared to reading. So, actually, one year, right, with one year intervention, right, you may not be able to capture that improvement. And, you know, because, like, we, we, we only had, like, you know, uh, we only tracked the participants for one year. So, there may be improvement, but it's just that uh, uh, we, we are not able to see it. See, it, like, because we didn't track it for, for long enough. Uh, and maybe just as a side note for, for this, right? Even for the even for the um, for the reading fluency and the sound spelling task, right? Okay, the improvement you always see it after maybe you won't see the improvement after like three months or it's usually after six months, right? That you see some sort of improvement in the scores. Okay, so I think. That's one possibility. Of course, the other possibility is that maybe the MAP curriculum, right, uh, was too focused on developing the phonemic awareness, and uh, uh, and and, uh, and therefore uh, didn't focus that much on the writing writing part, lah. Uh, okay. Uh, another 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 result, right? Okay, that we found was that. The improvement right was actually more pronounced right for younger age groups, seven to seven point five years old, okay, but not for the older age groups, okay. Uh, of course, remember at the when I talked about the participants that we recruited, right, I highlighted one fact for the older age group, right, uh, we did have difficulty right trying to recruit uh, participants from the eight to nine years old age group, okay. So because of that, we suspect that it may be a sample size issue. Because if you look at, if you recall some of the graphs just now, it's not statistically significant, but it's still the means are trending in the correct or predicted direction. Okay, so we suspect it may be a, 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 a sample size issue. And of course, the other conclusion that you can draw from this or we can draw from this is that maybe MAP right, intervention uh, might be if more effective for younger children compared to older children. Uh, some of the recommendations right, that uh, we had for DAS after this study right, was that you know, maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, so since we found that MAP, uh, which is now MLP, okay, uh, uh, is effective in improving like, phonological abilities, but maybe less, less so for like, the, the higher order writing tasks, right? uh, maybe they can uh, 
think about like you know focusing and 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 as I think as mentioned at the start of the at the start of the presentation just now, uh, you know that that DAS, DAS has actually in late 2016 right. Uh, started the enhancement of the existing MAC curriculum and they've renamed it MLP, okay, and focusing on key building blocks of literacy. And I would point out to you that one of the key building blocks here is uh, writing itself, lah, okay. And this is the new uh, main literacy program that is, you know, uh, I think it's the revamp may be complete now, okay. Uh, so, the other recommendation right, is that you know, MAP may, the other finding that we have was uh, MAP may be more effective for younger students. Uh, it actually suggests that maybe earlier interventions for students with dyslexia or difficulties with language right, okay, may, be, may be a better, maybe a good thing. And I think this is in line with uh, DAS uh, approach in recent years right, where they, you know, you, I mean, even though you cannot be the, diagnosed as this like as dyslexic until you reach like at least like six years old but I think DAS have this uh, initiative in recent years right where they say hey you know I know you cannot be officially be diagnosed as uh, dyslexic until unless you are six years old but for preschool preschool children they have this uh, this program right uh, that's catered to children who display some signs of learning difficulties at a younger age and uh, this is the preschool preschool program and I think if you, this was a, uh, news, I think a newspaper article earlier this year talking about how they partner with uh, 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 PCF, I think, yes, PCF, yeah, to roll out this program in some of the kindergartens. Yep. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, okay, this is not a perfect study. Uh, the study is hampered by you no know, small sample size. Uh, 82 is for an evaluation program, it's not, it's not a large sample size. Uh, some logistical constraint. Uh, you have participants drop out, leading to incomplete sessions. Uh, and as I as I mentioned just now, the problem with fewer participants in the older age groups, and uh, and maybe just as I mentioned here, huh, uh, one of the assumptions, of course, that we take for using such a study design right, is that when I when I uh, separate the participants into four different age groups at the point of enrollment, right? That's an assumption that I made. And this assumption must be true, right, for us to kind of like assume that the results here make sense. And the assumption is, okay, that the developmental trajectory, right, for on the average, okay, for the four different age groups, right, are more or less similar. Okay, more or less are similar. So, uh, I do believe that that's, that's a fair enough assumption that one can make with regards to like, you know, the, the, the sample that we have here. Lah, okay? And uh, so, uh, in conclusion, the current study provided some evidence that MAP was effective in improving uh, some of the literacy abilities of students with dyslexia. And uh, I think, you know, as I mentioned just now, in late 2016, uh, MAP you know, was... Uh, 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 enhanced and now there's this new curriculum called MLP, okay, and so I think actually DS should also consider uh, evaluating this new enhanced curriculum when it reaches a steady state, lah. okay, that's all, okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tan.